Welcome to Life Point Pentecostal Church, where Christ is worshipped, the Word is preached, and people are loved. We endeavor to be a 21st century apostolic church in principle, practice, and power. We are Christ centered and community minded. Our desire is to connect, motivate, and inspire people to become disciples who make disciples. We desire to see lives transformed by the power of God's Spirit. We know that He heals and delivers, and we believe that everyone has a God-given purpose ready for them if they are only willing to receive it. We are a community of imperfect people serving a perfect and a holy God. Our life point is Jesus. The point of life is Jesus. And we want our lives and our church to point to Him. We're so glad you're here. Nothing is better than you 
better than you. here. I'm excited to come to you this beautiful Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning. It's beautiful and uh, it's just a, a new thing. This is a different way to have church on Easter Sunday and we're celebrating a little bit differently but I hope you got your, your Easter bag and you have your communion ready. We're about to take communion and uh, we got a bit of a Sunday school treat in there for the kids. There's an activity in there and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. And some goodies. There's some chocolate in there and some candy. So uh, I think we should just get started this morning. We're going to move into uh, communion. It's so very important that we understand that communion is a big part of the church, especially around Easter. And uh, I believe we can still partake in communion uh, via the Internet. We can do this online, and we're going to do this as a church family this morning. But before we do, I would ask that you would just take a minute right now with me, and we're going to repent of our sins. This is very important. The Bible says that we should, in the fear of God, just repent of our sins and that we take communion uh, worthily. The Bible says is not to take it unworthily. So if we just ask God to forgive us of our sins, God's going to uh, take care of anything that might be condemning us or holding us back from, from remembering Him. We do this in remembrance of Him. Amen. Can you pray with me just for a minute right now? Let's repent of our sins together. Lord, I'm asking you to wash us in your blood, God. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I pray that you would just help me today, God, to remember, Lord, all that you have done for me, Lord, and the sins you have forgiven, God, the grace that you have given, God. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love, and I thank you for washing me in your blood. Come on, Life Point, amen, right now. Just ask God, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins in Jesus' name. Praise God. I hope you prayed with us and, and asked God to forgive you of your sins. It's a beautiful thing to do. Paul said, I die daily. It's something that we should do and, and in humility is ask God to forgive us of our sins every day. So that being said, I would like you to prepare uh, the cup. We have uh, the bread on the top and we have the cup uh, with the grape juice underneath. And you just peel that back. Why don't you do that right now with me? Just peel it back and prepare it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And while you're doing that, I want to read the scripture. Praise God. The Bible says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, your worthy God of the highest praise. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for my sins, God. That your body was broken, God. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice on the cross, God. Thank you, Jesus, for Easter Sunday, God. Thank you, Lord, that we can do communion and remembrance, God, of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, that's all right. It's okay to take a minute and just worship God as we remember that He died on the cross for us. Amen. So this portion of Scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. 
And uh, it's Paul the Apostle telling us the significance of how powerful communion is. Amen. I'm going to continue reading. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood for my sins, God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, God. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the cross. We thank you for Calvary today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible goes on to say, church, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. I think it's important that we take the time, maybe it's uh, around the coffee table today, and discuss with your family the importance of communion and the importance of being a part of the body of Christ. And, and I want to thank you for joining us uh, online today for Easter Sunday. And we're going to pray together just as we transition to the Word of God this morning. I've got a word on my heart that I believe the Lord has given me for this season and for this time. And it's a comfort uh, to the church. I believe it's really going to encourage you today. Praise God. Let's just pray before I get into the Word this morning. Why don't you help pastor this morning? Why don't you help me and, and just pray for me that God would anoint me to preach His Word today. Amen. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask you to have your way, God. I, I pray that your word would be in my mouth, a two-edged sword, God, that, that you would have your way, Lord Jesus. We want to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church today. Anoint my lips of clay, God, to preach truth today. It's been a very hard uh, week, God. We have, we have suffered loss in our church. We have had a lot of challenges, God. And I'm asking you to bless somebody and comfort somebody and help somebody today, God, by using your word, God. Minister to us today, God. Minister my heart, God, by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, can you help me? Let's pray together about this. That, that the least we can do, and we're praying today that post-COVID, that after all this, that post-isolation is actually going to look a lot like post-Calvary. Amen. There was a lot of darkness that came when Jesus died, and, and there was a lot of stillness in that tomb. But on the third day, Jesus rose, and we're celebrating the resurrection uh, this Easter Sunday. We're celebrating the resurrection of the power of God. And I believe that after post-COVID, it's going to look a lot like post-Calvary, and, and that God is doing something great at this time. If we could only perceive it by faith today, that God is doing a new thing, and let's trust Him through this season. Amen. We're going to trust God through this season. Would you turn with me, if you have your Bible today, uh, the book of Romans chapter 8. Book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. We're going to get into the Word of God. Amen. And uh, I want to preach to you something very powerful uh, in the Word of God that tells us that there is a promise that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides in the body of Christ. It resides in the church. Amen. Let's read this together. If you could turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, the Bible says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Isn't that a powerful promise that God is giving us the same power that he, he used to come alive and to raise from the dead. And that resides in the church. And, and I want to preach in the Holy Ghost just for about 20 minutes this morning, 30 minutes to try to reach uh, you in your home in our city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Light point, most of us are familiar with the biblical phrase, this is that spoken by the Apostle Peter when he quoted that the prophet Joel had prophesied this in the Old Testament. In the book of Acts, and for those who are not familiar with this passage, Peter was explaining to onlookers. He was describing biblically what was being witnessed on the day of Pentecost. You see, God was doing a new thing. 
And God gave Peter the keys. He gave Peter the key points to bring into perspective, putting it all together for everybody at that time, what God was doing, that God was doing a new thing. But it was a new thing that he had actually prophesied long ago. Hallelujah. This did not surprise any Bible scholars and those that were looking for the Messiah to come. That when Pentecost took everybody by surprise, that Jesus was ready to roll out, hallelujah, his book of Acts church. And in my opening text this morning, the Bible says that God's Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that the same effect of the powerful resurrection of Christ that we are celebrating today will also quicken the church or our mortal bodies to live in the Spirit. Not only now, and this scripture is also related to the rapture of the church or the catching away of the saints, but it mostly signifies here in the book of Romans that we should not live in the flesh but in the power of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Again, this is a mystery to some, but to the church triumphant this morning, it is a powerful reminder that God has given us as believers great power to overcome sin and fear in our generation. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate that together this morning? Just like when Peter the Apostle stood up with the eleven on the day of Pentecost, I have something to say. I just want to put some things into powerful perspective today. Come on, somebody help me preach. I just want to put the devil on blast we're still here the church is still alive Uh, come on help me preach even in the comments this morning Uh, I want to put the world on notice the WHO the UN and the Chinese communist government Uh, the church is alive Uh, I said the church is alive and well today regardless of the limitations and segregation despite this isolation life point going live this morning uh, to give our world hope today it's the same resurrection power this morning as it was any other Easter going back 2,000 years. It's the same power today, bringing the church alive once again. We're going to see post-COVID just what the church saw post-Calvary. And that's great revival. And maybe some persecution. We don't really know, but look up church, our redemption is drawing near. With new challenges will come new opportunities and great blessings. But don't worry, God's just rolling out a new thing. It's a good thing. It's all in how you look at it. It's all about our perspective. You see, the definition of the word quicken here in my text on this Easter morning is quite revealing of our current situation. It's safe to say a lot of things are slowing down. But to those who are spiritually aware, many things are also speeding up. God is doing a new thing through all of this. The definition of the word quicken is to make alive. Hallelujah. Come on. It, it, to revive. Church, it's revival time. Amen. And also it could mean to stimulate, to kindle like a fire, to cause to burn more intensely. Amen. It could be also uh, defined as to make more rapid, to hasten or accelerate. To make a curve sharper, amen, like the learning curve to live streaming. God has put us in a situation where we have got to become very relevant and very engaging online to try to reach our world. And and God has given us the ability. He has quickened the church to do that. Amen. Also to make a slope steeper. It's all downhill from here. Before Jesus comes, I believe we're going to see great harvest. Amen. And also to come to life especially to enter into a phase of active growth, hallelujah, and the development to reach the stage of gestation at which fetal motion is felt, Uh, amen. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. God is birthing something. Also, the definition could be to shine more brightly. It's time to rise and shine, church. And finally, to become more rapid. This is why everything is speeding up. End time events are taking place. God is quickening the church. God is quickening the church to begin to reach the whole world before He comes. Amen, and we need it too. It appears as a society that we are drifting farther and farther apart, that we are separated and segregated, divided and even conquered as a free country. Where did all our rights go? Will the economy recover? Will our charter of rights and freedoms ever recover? And people aren't getting along 
nation is rising against nation. And just like the Bible says that in the end time, that the love of many shall wax cold. Everybody's taking sides. Everybody's taking score. Society is drifting farther and farther apart, even stretching to the breaking point. Do you feel it, church? There's a tension right now. And on this first Easter Sunday in over 150 years before Canada was even founded, that churches are empty. Churches are empty this morning all across our country. And I feel it this morning to be transparent today, preaching to empty chairs. But life point, I still feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Do you feel the Holy Ghost today, even in your home? Can you still help me preach this morning, even though we're having church online this morning? I know God can move. How many know that we don't serve God by feelings anyway? We serve God by faith. So I want to preach to somebody today, and I feel like preaching this, that as a church, as the world seems like it's tearing apart at the seams, growing farther and farther apart, that we as a church are getting closer and closer. We are getting closer to each other. We're getting closer to God at this time than we have ever been. We are getting closer during this time of isolation. Closer to God, closer to each other, and closer to the day and to the hour. And do you know why? Do you know why that God is drawing us closer at this time? Because we are getting closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want somebody to say that with me today. Would you say closer? Amen. Closer. I don't know if we're closer to the mark of the beast and the new world order. I imagine we are. But let's not forget that this Easter Sunday, that this is just a reminder, church, we are closer to heaven now than we have ever been, biblically speaking. Sometimes it's got to get bad before it gets better. And God's about to straighten out all this mess. God is still in control. God is on the throne. We may be isolated, church, but we are not intimidated. Amen. And I want to encourage somebody. We may be two meters apart at Walmart. But in the Holy Ghost, but in unity, we are closer now than we have ever been. We need each other right now to be closer than we've ever been before. You need to reach out to somebody in the church. Share this sermon. We are closer to thousands right now who would never ever have stepped foot inside a church. We are closer even over live stream to achieving reaching the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to speak to some preachers today. This is not a bad thing, preaching on the internet. God is going to use this. And I don't want to uh, bore anybody with the details. I want to remind the church that LifePoint is going live today. And it's only proof that on this Easter Sunday, and I want the devil and the whole world to know that the body of Christ is still alive. Amen. We're celebrating the resurrection, that the church is rising up to meet this challenge. However you're doing it over uh, uh, the live stream on the internet with your church, I want to tell you and encourage you in the Holy Ghost, God can help you. And God will give you the ability to do that. That on this Easter Sunday, I'm not just preaching again that He is risen. I thank God that Jesus validated the atonement by rising from the dead. But I want to go further today. I'm preaching this morning that as the body of Christ, we are rising. That it's time to rise, church, to rise to the challenge, to rise to the occasion of reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And right now, for somebody to just rise up in your spirit, come on, help me preach. I think it's okay to get excited online this morning. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen. We ought to celebrate the church going live because the time has come to tell the whole world that the body of Christ is still alive. We haven't gone anywhere. We're still here. And until the trumpet sounds, life point, we still have Holy Ghost hope today. Come on, somebody say, I'm alive. Amen. As for these restrictions, come on. We have always been set apart. This is nothing new for apostolics. Who cares if the government says that liquor stores are essential and that the church is not? We shouldn't. Uh, be going to liquor stores anyways. Amen. Come on. We got no business as apostolics being in the liquor store, but while hurting people self-medicate, 
we as a church are going to do something similar to ease our pain. We're going to self-isolate, but with the new wine. Come on. We're going to celebrate all the joy that we have, not just focus on all this trouble. And we're also going to enjoy great peace when we meditate in the presence of the Lord. I hope and I know today we can all do that. We all have the time on our hands now that through this isolation and with the daily time of meditation with Jesus, we can all get through this. We can get through anything with the peace of God right now that passes all understanding. Let's take a minute right now. I want to pray for you and your family. If you are suffering with fear, paralyzing uh, fear because of uncertainty about the future, I want to pray for you right now. You would receive peace in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray for somebody right now watching this live stream, watching this video today, uh, maybe in the future, God, that you would touch them right now with your hand, God. Give them peace that passeth all understanding in Jesus' name. Come on, can you feel that? God is taking authority over your situation. You can trust God today. Why? Because there's power in His presence. Amen. How many people know today there's power in His presence? Come on, somebody needs to hear this today. Let me help you today. If you have never prayed before, ask God to comfort you. Ask God to forgive you today. Reach out and just talk to Him today. Jesus is as close as the mention of His name. And church, here it is. Let the words of your mouth be acceptable in the sight of God during this crisis. Stop complaining about all the stagnation and maybe start thanking God for your staycation. Amen. For the peace, for your joy, for your salvation. God's about to get us out of all this. Trust Him. He's got you. This, I believe, is just the beginning of sorrows. And we have a ways to go. But we are going live today because we are still alive. The church is still alive. Amen. And we don't have to be paralyzed by this fear. We can trust God that He's in control. Come on. We can trust God right now. Can you trust God today, church? Can I challenge you just to hold on and trust the Lord at this time? We don't have any other alternative to tell the truth, so relax. Take a deep breath. Trust God and walk by faith right now in your life. I want you to know today that we can rise above fear, above the doubt and the unbelief or worrying about what's going to happen next. We can focus on God. We can focus on the family of God. Do you need support this morning? Come on over to the winning side. We want to help you. If you need somebody to encourage you, connect with us. Come on, get converted. Get connected. Even if it means getting corrected. Come on, somebody. It's time for your change today. Come alive in Christ. Keep coming to online church until all this passes. And even after all this, Life Point's going to keep going live, to keep reaching around the world to prove a point that through all this, God's church is still alive. Hallelujah. We're not just alive today, but we can thrive today. Through all this change and through this uncomfortable transition, I know it's been a shock to our system from always getting ready for Sunday. But now, just like heaven on earth, just like on earth as it is in heaven, every day can be Sunday. Come on, I believe people who have never experienced Pentecost are going to come into contact with great Holy Ghost apostolic preaching every day of the week. Come on, virtual Bible studies, ongoing courses, and ministry training made available on our website. We want to help people come alive in God. Amen. And stay alive. Maybe it's been a long time since you were challenged in the Spirit to come alive to a new level of growing in God. Why not come alive with Light Point today? Amen. I just feel like stopping right here and, and that we would all stand. Amen. It's like we're having church at home. I'm joking today. If you don't want to stand, you can just raise your hands right on your couch. It don't matter. We're going to close in prayer. And going forward, if you want to make a commitment to God, and you are considering water baptism maybe in the name of Jesus, we want to help you with that. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance. We're going to ask for God to forgive us of our sins like we did at the beginning doing communion. But if you have never been water baptized or you have any questions maybe about receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we want to talk to you and I'm asking you to reach out to us soon. 
Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive us of our sins. God, maybe somebody watching this live stream today, somebody watching this video, maybe next week, these words will comfort them as we pray together a prayer of repent, repentance, God. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me in your blood. Forgive me of every thought, every evil word, God, every evil thought, every evil word, and every evil deed, God. Forgive me of my sins, I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that with me by faith, I believe that God has begun the process of having a relationship with you if you would just open up and let the Savior in. Let Jesus touch you right now. Let's take a minute and pray together. Lord, I'm asking you to touch somebody, God, in their faith right now. Give them strength. Somebody watching this is, is needing hope. They need help right now, God. Somebody needs support. I pray that you would just give them the boldness to reach out and connect with LifePoint today. We want to help them, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that something powerful would happen today on this Easter Sunday, despite it being an Easter Sunday online. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank everybody today for joining us over live stream and celebrating the resurrected Savior with us. God bless and have a wonderful Easter. And remember, the body of Christ is rising up to the challenge of COVID. In Jesus' name, amen.